In ancient China, the dragon king of the eastern ocean stopped the rains, causing a drought that ravaged the lands. Offerings and prayers were made, but would not suffice, for the dragon king hungered for the flesh of children. As children played beside the shore, a guard was sent to abduct a boy and girl from the group. However, the child's friend was with them. The friend was China's child warrior god, Noja. And this is Legends from the Pacific. Aloha, and thank you for joining us. This is Legends from the Pacific, episode 145, China's Child Warrior God, Noja. I am Kamuela Kaneshiro, a native Hawaiian professional writer, speaker, and Comic-Con panelist with extensive film and television experience. I study mythology, I've encountered unusual things, and I'm a geek. In the beginning, there was the Pacific Ocean. A canoe broke the horizon, piloted by Pele a beautiful Polynesian maiden who dominated the waves until she felt safe to stop. The audiobook of Our Legends from the Pacific Book One is now available. Narrated by multi-award winning voice actress Emily Wu Zeller. Emily has worked on anime, the video game Cyberpunk 2077, and over 500 audiobooks including Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back from a certain point of view. Just click the link in our show notes to purchase our audiobook and enjoy Emily telling our stories today. Later in this episode, your featured song in Hawaiian word, but first, let me share with you the third Lotus Prince. As usual, I apologize for any mispronounced names or words and appreciate your understanding. I decided to share this story with you since many parts of the world seem to be experiencing record levels of heat. Now, Noja was the third son of famed general Li Jing and Lady Yin, who was believed to be the incarnation of the Jade Emperor's second daughter, which sort of makes Noja his grandson. Lady Yin had an unusual pregnancy, since she was pregnant for three years and six months. I don't think many women could bear that. She gave birth to something like a large meatball. Her husband, fearing it was a monster, struck it with his sword. It split in two and revealed Noja, who was a small, fully formed boy that could walk and talk. Records indicated Noja got his name from one of two ways. The first was No being on the back of his left hand and Ja on the back of his right. Or it was influenced by the heavenly being Taiyi Zenren, who told Noja's parents what his name would be. But that's not all. You see, while Lady Yin was pregnant, Taiyi Zenren appeared in a dream, asked if she'd accept Noja, which she did. Then after his birth, the heavenly being accepted him as a student. At this time, Noja was given two weapons, a cosmic red sash, which is a sash version of Doctor Strange's cape, though more indestructible, and it can regenerate. Noja's second weapon was perhaps his strongest, the Universal Ring, which is a golden ring he can shrink or enlarge. It's also supposed to be the Taoist teachings that make up the universe. It should be noted, Noja's depictions are interesting because he looks like a girl, but this is a case of cultural attire. Figures from Hinduism, the epic Ramayana, and even Krishna influenced Noja. Interestingly enough, one of Noja's influences, Nala Kubar, was the son of Kuber, and Kuber has been connected to Noja's father, Li Jing. Kuber, as you may recall, was shared in a previous episode. As Noja and his friends played along the shore, a creature emerged and grabbed a girl and boy. Noja stopped the monster and asked why it wanted his friends. The creature said he was obeying his orders for his master, the Dragon King, hungered for children. Noja beat the monster and challenged the Dragon King to a fight. The Dragon King didn't understand how a child could beat his guard and sent his third son to deal with him. When the Dragon Prince emerged, he encountered Noja. They fought, and Noja killed him. The Dragon King was devastated, 
and went to the heavens to consult the Jade Emperor. Noja discovered this, intercepted the Dragon King outside the palace gates, and beat him. The Dragon King retreated to his palace, fostered his forces, and marched upon the mortals. When Noja discovered this, he confronted the Dragon King, saying only he was to blame, not the other mortals. A deal was made. The Dragon King would return the reins, and no harm would come to any children if Noja died. Noja agreed and killed himself, restoring nature's balance to our realm. When his master discovered this, he gathered lotus roots, made a body, and resurrected his student. A big mahalo nui loa to Ollie and Will Geis, Christopher, Meg, Jessica Bullock, Edward Pueo Henke, Felisa H., The Makuli Guy, and of course, Ren Shepard. Your support keeps our show going. If you'd like to support our show, please click the link in our show notes and become a Legends from the Pacific Patreon member to enjoy an exclusive monthly Hawaiian story, like the rare story of who the Hawaiian volcano god was before Pele, the return of the Hawaiian demigod brothers Kana and Nehue, and other nifty benefits. Your rewards are waiting for you, so become a Legends from the Pacific Patreon member today. It should be noted, some variations stated after Noja's death, his spirit told his mother to build him a shrine. She did, and when people worshipped him, Noja began curing people. However, when his father found out, he was worried this may upset the dragons and destroyed the shrine. I'll get more into this father-son dynamic in a bit. So, after Noja's resurrection, he was given more treasures, including wheels of fire which speed him through the sky, a fire-tipped spear, and the masks of nine dragons' holy fire, which allow him to breathe fire. He also gained the ability to grow three heads and six arms to fight multiple foes. During this time, he was usually with the gods in the heavens or fighting his father. You see, things weren't that great between the two. There's even stories where Noja is a problem child who eventually learns his way, but he and his father are constantly at odds. More Buddhist versions of this story stated it was Buddha who resurrected Noja instead of his master. After many battles, Noja's father realized he can't keep up with his deified offspring and prayed to Buddha. Buddha granted him peace and gave him a great pagoda, which changed the wrathful father into the pagoda-bearing heavenly king. While Noja had many opponents, his most known was the monkey king, Sun Wukong. Noja was one of the heavenly beings who fought Sun Wukong when the monkey was feasting on all the immortal delicacies. Of course, Sun Wukong defeated Noja, but the two became friends. And that's a story for another time. Today, Noja has been depicted in many forms of media, and while he's normally illustrated as a child, modern retellings portray him as a teenager. One of the more interesting modern versions of Noja includes him teaming up with the Transformers. Which I guess I could see, since the Autobots all have wheels. On the subject of fire wheels, certain parts of Asia refer to motorized hoverboards and segways as fire wheels. People who worship Naja refer to him as the third Lotus Prince, since he's a third child. His followers are parents who hope their child is strong and healthy, and delivery drivers or professional drivers pray to him to ensure they're safe on their routes. On the subject of offerings, they are usually candy and sweets since he's a kid. But some records stated offering duck may be discouraged since ducks may have protected Noja's remains. Depending where you are, Noja is worshipped either during the Double Nine Festival, which is the ninth day of the ninth lunar month, or the eighth day of the fifth lunar month, which is also Buddha's birthday or when he obtained enlightenment. So, what did we learn? When first learning of Noja, I couldn't help but link him coming from a meatball with the Japanese story Momotaro. And finally, something interesting I found involved Noja and others growing multiple heads. You see, it's theorized this could have been metaphorical in the sense that the individual had the knowledge of two or three heads. By extension, this could apply to sight, meaning it was like he was all seen or saw everything. And multiple arms could mean he struck multiple enemies quickly. I felt this made a lot of sense, since literally having multiple heads 
could be a bad thing. As we all saw with the three-headed giant from Monty Python's Quest for the Holy Grail. If you like what you heard, please give us a rating and write a review. I'd really appreciate it, as well as our future listeners. Our theme song is Mystery by Tavana, courtesy of High Sessions. Sound effects are by Sound Effects Factory. Our music coordinator is Matt Duffy, a.k.a. DJ Triple Bypass. Links and channels can be found on our website, legendsfromthepacific.com, including a link to your featured song, which is The River Runs by John Cruz, courtesy of High Sessions. Legends from the Pacific was written, produced, and edited by me, Kamuela Kaneshiro. I also wrote our original stories. Your featured Hawaiian word is huila. Huila means wheel. An example of huila is a popular TV game show with Vanna White and Pat Sajak is the huila of fortune. Once again, huila is Hawaiian for wheel. Thank you once again for listening. Mahalo and a hui ho! Swim on out to the sea, oh, let's go down.